Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you want to be notified of any of these videos which give you insights into teaching, leadership and writing, then hit that subscribe button and you will be notified. Remember any of the links, any books, any websites that I reference are in the um, description below. So look out for those. Today, I wanted to talk about something that's very dear to my heart and that's active learning approaches in lessons. Now, there's a lot of research that suggests that adopting an active learning approach in lessons helps students to remember what they are learning. Now, people learn in different ways. This is true. They have different learning styles, um, but there are going to be a significant a group of students who will learn best from uh, seeing, from writing and from doing. And so what I want to focus on today is the doing aspect, because when it comes particularly to uh, teaching maths and students learning maths, doing is really important in order to understand the concepts that are conveyed in maths, which sometimes are very abstract in their form and unless they're made concrete and real for students, it becomes very difficult for them to understand. And sometimes, based on my experiences, teachers jump ahead to the abstract uh, part of a um, notion or a concept too quickly for some students. So what I wanted to do is spend a little bit of time showing you some tools and ways in which you can use uh, an approach which supports uh, the development of a deep understanding of concepts in maths. Okay, so I'm going to be referencing um, some tools that you can find online for free and also talking a little bit about um, Mastery Mathematics, which has been developing over the past few years, particularly in the UK, and is linked to approaches that had developed for many years in Singapore uh, because it had moved from being one of the lowest ranked countries in the world for, for mathematics and then went up the scales in terms of um, results for mathematics because the government put a lot of effort into training teachers and to adopting a very consistent approach in the delivery of mathematics, which was based on the understanding of mastering concepts. And in order to master concepts, they focus very much on embedding the concrete, the pictorial, and then the abstract. The concrete being the hands-on approaches to learning, the pictorial being the representations of those with images of those concrete materials, and then the abstract being the actual number application. So what does that actually mean? So for example, if we were talking about numbers and, and for example, adding numbers in a very simple way, and we had um, two plus two equals four, rather than jumping to the number or the numerical representation of two plus two, what we would do is we would have students, and it would probably be quite young students in the UK. This would be in year one, for example, or even in reception classes. Um, and in American core curriculum, this would probably be in KG. Um, then you would see them using counters, for example, two, and another two, how many do they make? they make four and they would count the four up. Um, so that is the concrete stage. When they move on to the pictorial, there are tools that can be used to support that. If you are relying on remote teaching or you want to incorporate interactivity and technology, and that's what I'm gonna focus on today, making learning active for students, particularly in mathematics. This is especially useful for students who have English as a second language um, because they need to see things, they need to do things in order to understand um, because sometimes they don't have the mathematical vocabulary to access the learning when you're simply delivering it verbally. Modelling in mathematics is really important and so that's why I am going to share my screen with you in order that we can um, demonstrate the way in which you can use some interactive tools. So sometimes what I see is that um, teachers straight away might move to the two and two, which I just modelled for you in terms of using concrete materials equals four. Okay, now some students might be ready for that because they already have a clear idea of the concept of number and what 
two means, but some people, some students will not be ready for that. So that's why these concrete materials are necessary, the two, and then you add the additional two to make the four. Okay, so that's why we use counters, for example. Um, but they're not the only things that you can use. You can use other tools. And that's why I'm going to share with you the other tools that are available online because they're really helpful. So um, these are just one. I'm going to particularly go to this one because I find this has some useful tools for you. And we're going to look at um, using Unifix cubes. Okay. okay, so using the idea of two plus two, we're going to use cubes, Unifix cubes, two. We're going to add two. And we're going to say how much they equal. How many they equal now? Your students may have already used Unifix cubes, in which case they will be very familiar with this idea. Um, so we've got two plus two equals four. So they can physically see uh, through your modeling the act of a concrete becoming a pictorial. We've got two here plus two equals four. Once that is understood, they can move on to the abstract concept of two plus two equals four. That's just one example in which you can use the concrete pictorial abstract to model and support students in their mathematical learning. This can also help with takeaway and um, you can find different ways in which you can use these cubes. For example, you might use grouping. Un two six. So how many groups of three do we have? We've got three here. So that's one group. And we've got three here. It's another group. So we have one group, two groups. We have two groups of three. Two groups of three equals how many? How many do we have in total? Six. So you can use these um, manipulatives, these interactive manipulatives to help with various concepts and operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and so on. They're also very helpful um, in other ways. So we've got 10 frames here. You will have used physical 10 frames before you get to the representational 10 frames. And you might then have how many groups of five make 10. There's one group of five, two groups of five make 10. Uh, you could even have two groups of 10 and how many they make, 20. Okay, so there are different ways in which you can use these resources. Those of you using the Common Core curriculum will be familiar with Reckonrex. So you can also use Reckonrex for the notion of uh, groups of five. Here we have five. And five, how many do we have all together? We have 10. Five, five, we have 10. How many tens do we have? Two, how many in total? We have 20. So this could be two groups of five equals 10, or four groups of five. equals 20 or it could even be that you say four groups of five is the same as two groups of ten so there are different ways in which the interactive tools can be used to support concepts in mathematics you also have on here shapes probability with dice um, you have prime factor tiles. The other tool that's really useful is uh, the toy theater, where you have fraction bars, fraction walls, decimal strips, percentage strips, fraction strips. Um, if you were 
They're teaching the concept of fractions and you wanted to embed the idea of uh, a whole being made up of two halves, then this would certainly be useful for you. They may have used a physical example of the fraction wall prior to you using an interactive tool. You might want to convey then that that's equal to a half is equal to two, half, um, two quarters and a whole is equal to four quarters to embed the idea of denominators, numerators and their functions. You also have um, angles. So here you could discuss the idea of 360 degrees in, in a complete turn, how angles are turns. You could talk about obtuse and reflex angles, opposite angles, um, as you get further up uh, the curriculum. So hopefully that's been helpful in you understanding how you can use interactive tools to embed concepts in maths. The reason I wanted to focus on this is because of my experiences in going into schools and seeing that teachers sometimes move to the abstract far too quickly for some students in particular, um, and they lose them so that the students don't understand what the, the learning is behind the maths, they don't understand the concepts and therefore aren't able to apply their skills um, later on in the lesson when it comes to them being asked to do so. So there's an approach that you can use which is really helpful and it's the I do, we do, you do approach. The I do being the teacher modelling section, the we do being let's use for example an interactive whiteboard or if you're working remotely, the screen to work interactively um, to embed that concept using manipulatives. And then the you do is you do it on your own now and see how you get on in applying the concepts. Um, and that's really helpful in being able to um, really consolidate for students the concepts that you're trying to convey mathematically. Active learning approaches are really helpful in the maths classroom and in the next video what I'm going to focus on is how you can take maths out of the maths classroom and reinforce or develop maths concepts through the use of the outdoors and also in the physical education classroom. So I hope that you have found today's video useful. If you have, then remember to hit that subscribe button. Um, it will help you to be notified of any future videos, including the one that I plan to do on how to use the outdoors and the physical education classroom to support your teaching in mathematics. Look forward to seeing you next time.